It's what we're seeing with um, People's Bank of China and also all the other central banks who are doing exactly the same thing. Is they're sending a very clear signal that they're seeing the purchasing power of fiat currencies declining. Um, and again, talking purely in charting terms, it's the start of a new bull phase. So that's where we are. I think what we've seen is we've seen sort of part one of the new bull phase. Um, and, uh, you know, that was a run up to what, 24 45 or whatever it got to we're now consolidating that and we've been consolidating that for the last two months or so two or three months uh, and at some stage that consolidation will end and off we go last year central banks worldwide added a net 1037 tons of gold to their reserves just shy of the record 1082 tons added the previous year the latest world gold council central bank gold survey indicates that this appetite for gold is not diminishing with 29% of central banks planning to increase their gold reserves in the next 12 months, the highest level of interest since the survey began in 2018. According to Alastair McLeod, central banks worldwide are increasingly aware of the declining purchasing power of fiat currencies, especially the US dollar, which has long been the dominant global currency. This awareness prompts central banks to seek safer alternatives, and gold has emerged as the preferred option. The shift towards gold could have serious implications for U.S. debt, as diminished confidence in the dollar might lead to a decrease in foreign investment. The recent surge in gold prices to $2,400 per ounce can be attributed to a lengthy period of market consolidation, which often precedes dramatic breakouts. While the initial rise was remarkable, the market has entered another consolidation phase. This pause is not unexpected and suggests that the next phase of the bull market could be imminent. Analysts believe this consolidation phase points to a potentially significant upward movement in gold prices in the near future. The People's Bank of China, PBOC, exemplifies this trend. Since January 2023, the PBOC has increased its gold holdings by 8 million ounces, worth $51 billion, raising the proportion of gold in China's total reserves from 3.5% in December 2022 to 4.9% in April 2024. Concurrently, China's holdings of US Treasuries have dropped by $102 billion over the past year, hitting a 25-year low of $767 billion in March 2024. This shift indicates a strategic move away from the dollar. In this evolving scenario, the market's recent consolidation phase signals that the next upward surge in gold prices may be on the horizon. We will present clips from Alastair McLeod's interview. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. I think there's a misunderstanding about um, what $2,400 $2, gold price really means. I mean, you know, we can, we can illustrate this with um, the actions of the um, People's Bank of China. Um, you know, read all the headlines. The People's Bank of China has been buying gold. That's actually got it completely the wrong way around. What the People's Bank of China has been doing is selling dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and the distinction is terribly important, Kai. Understand that it's a distinction and you'll understand actually what's happening. Because what the, um, the People's Bank of China is is in effect saying is we think the purchasing power of dollars in our reserves is going down now the various reasons why that might be the case but it is the purchasing power of the dollar falling not the price of gold rising and this is you know this is where everybody gets gold wrong and particularly the establishment if i could the, the bullion banks in london um the swaps on comex um you know all these guys, their only experience has been in a fiat currency environment since particularly the mid-1980s when everything was financialized with Big Bang in London and so on and so forth. So what they're doing is they're trading something. You know, they account in dollars or they account in euros or pounds or whatever. Um, and uh, so their comparison is profits and losses measured in the fiat currencies. But actually, in monetary terms, because gold is legal money without counterparty risk everywhere, and your and mine currency are not counterparty risk free, and they're not used everywhere, you can see where the risk is. The risk is in the fiat currencies. So 
you know, on that basis, what we're seeing with um, People's Bank of China and also all the other central banks who are doing exactly the same thing is they're sending a very clear signal that they're seeing the purchasing power of fiat currencies declining. Um, so where do you get out? I mean, do you sell, you know, do you sell dollars for I don't know, yen? Well, we've just knocked that argument on the head. Euros? I mean, the answer, Kai, is that, you know, the, the dollar is the king rat of currencies. It is the number one fiat currency. And if you're going to get out of the dollar, you've got to get out of fiat currencies full stop and you've got to go into gold. And this is the conclusion that central banks around the world, are, 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 you know, have woken up to. Um, and of course, this also doesn't uh, augur well for uh, US uh, debt funding from foreign sources. I think what we've seen is we've seen sort of part one of the new bull phase. Um, and, uh, you know, that was a run up to what, 2445 or whatever it got to. We're now consolidating that. And we've been consolidating that for the last two months or so, two or three months. Uh, and at some stage, that consolidation will end and off we go. But as I say, what it's actually about is the, the declining purchasing power of the dollar, which, you know, we're talking about when we look at the gold price, or, you know, if you like, <laughs> the dollar priced in gold. Um, and, uh, you know, that's going to continue to, to decline. I mean, you know, what, what actually, what gives the dollar its value? I mean, you know, we're talking about bits of paper or... <laughs> Units, units on a, you know, in some sort of um, electronic account. Um, it's just faith in it. It's just faith. That's all it is. What gives gold its value? Well, you can actually hold it. And it's legal money. Chinese households are renowned for their high savings rate, with an estimated 35% of their income being saved. This propensity for saving has been a defining characteristic of China's economic landscape since the reform and opening up policies. From 2010 to 2020, the household savings rate consistently exceeded 70%. By 2020, it reached an unprecedented 90.26%. Unlike in the West, where savings might be channeled into property or the stock market, in China, a substantial portion of this money is deposited into bank accounts and increasingly invested in gold and silver. The People's Bank of China's activities in the gold market underscore a significant shift in global economic strategies. While headlines might suggest that the bank has stopped buying gold due to high prices, the reality is far more nuanced. Alastair points out that the bank's actions are fundamentally about managing the dollar's declining purchasing power. Historically, the People's Bank of China has been amassing gold long before the public was allowed to buy it. This accumulation began quietly in the 1980s even as Western markets offloaded gold during a bear market, indicating a strategic approach to bolstering national reserves. Uh, the point is that the Chinese um, as a nation are a saving nation. Um, it's estimated that Chinese households uh, save 35% of their income. Now, 35% of their income is uh, around about $6 trillion on um, uh, Chinese GDP. So six trillion dollars. Where does it go? Property? Yesterday's story. Stock market? Not really. It goes into bank accounts and it goes into gold. And I think it's going to increasingly going to go into gold and also silver because um, Chinese individuals can't go and buy foreign currencies or uh, foreign stocks or anything like that. They don't have these avenues which we have become accustomed to, whether the avenues are good or bad. It's a secondary question. But as far as the Chinese individuals are concerned, um, their banks will offer them the facility to deposit money, you know, currency, you are in, in yuan accounts, or alternatively in gold accounts. And as long as you've got a minimum of about five or six hundred yuan, which is what about eighty dollars or something, uh, you can open a gold account and you can accumulate your savings into that. What does the bank do? Well, the bank has to go out and cover these liabilities. Now, it might do it on a fractional reserve basis. I don't know. But I doubt very much that that's going to be the case. I think they will try and back it with physical bullion as much as possible. Of course, we don't see this necessarily because um, the accumulation of gold reserves, say, that um, you know, any of the major um, Chinese banks will be in the Shanghai Gold Exchange vaults. So this isn't going to be delivered to the public which incidentally has already delivered something like 27,000 tons of gold into the public. So, you know, this is, 
gold, this is why gold is moving. Um, I mean, the pricing of gold has actually moved to Shanghai. Um, you know, we're just dealing in sort of paper, which <laughs> pretends to be the real thing. Um, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> so these are interesting times, if I can say that. Um, as the Chinese would say, live in interesting times. Long before um, the Chinese people were allowed by the government to accumulate physical gold, the People's Bank of China was accumulating gold for the state, and it was siphoning this off into various state accounts to hide the degree of gold accumulation. They were appointed to do this by law, and I've got an English copy of this law, back in uh, 1983. And it wasn't until 2002 that they suddenly turned around and said, OK, uh, we'll let the people buy gold and we and we will set up the Shanghai Gold Exchange, which is controlled by the People's Bank, incidentally, uh, in order to facilitate them to do this. Um, and then they started advertising to people, rush out and buy gold. You know, this was the Chinese government advertising, you know, the merits of owning gold and all the rest of it. So, um, you know, the, the state, I reckon that by the time 2002 arrived, and remember, we're looking at a, a market which was a bear market in gold. Um, gold was being, uh, uh, if you like, um, uh, rejected by the Western capitalist fiat money system, so much so that it went down to you know, around about $250 um, uh, you know, from sort of you know, a very brief peak at over $800. And it was during that massive bear market when everybody in the West was getting rid of gold that China was quietly sort of buying it in. You know? I mean, they were the hidden buyer of, of, of gold. And they've accumulated. I reckon that by then they'd probably accumulated something like 20,000 tons at contemporary prices. It just made an awful lot of sense because, you know, China wasn't exposed to Keynesian economics. Um, and uh, therefore, they understood that gold is 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 true money. Um, and uh, I, I understand that even in, in Mandarin, uh, the word for gold is the same word as for money. So, <laughs> you know. We know what they you know, how they see this. According to analysts at Bank of America, gold prices are anticipated to surge significantly in the next 12 to 18 months, potentially reaching $3,000 per ounce. This bullish outlook stems from rising investment demand, escalating geopolitical tensions, interest rate cuts, and ongoing central bank purchases. These factors are poised to strengthen the position of gold as a safe haven asset driving its value upward in the foreseeable future. Share your thoughts on Alastair's prediction in the comment section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Until next time.